Well, let's get into it. Last night, actually on our way in, we got some a tidbit from AJ Schefter of Chop Sports correspondent uh, over at the Sauce Network texted us something that was relatively big, probably happened towards the end of the night, considering the L.A. Lakers are on the West Coast. And uh, the, uh, big news, because this is relatively alarming if you're a Lakers fan or, or a fan of the player itself. But last night, Russell Westbrook was benched by Vogel the head coach of the Lakers bench, not like a he's injured. He might, you know, I don't know. He came up kind of limp. He was benched. Ladies and gentlemen, here are some of the tweets that came up last night. So last night uh, it was from Melissa Roblin, uh, LeBron James, after fielding questions about Frank Vogel's job security, he goes, if you got something to ask me besides trying to shit on somebody, I'll answer those. So clearly he's trying to defend his coach. Obviously Russell Westbrook, according to uh, another Twitter account, Russell Westbrook is shooting 32% and 25% from three in 2022. And that's stat muse. Stat muse. I can't see. I'm, I'm like, like literally it's blind. Very, I got to go to I like that. Eyewear. I like that website. I like that account. They have a lot of interesting stuff. So if you want to know anything about, let's say, individual matchups against each other, you type in like Matt LaFleur against uh, Kyle Shanahan, and they'll just, it'll just automatically just be a plethora either. of knowledge. Very good website. So it's a big, uh, it's a big topic. And uh, the reason why is because of all the hype that was brought around when the, when the deal was made, even I made a big deal of it. I said, Oh my God, you know what? The Lakers just keep getting these stars and it's just not fair. And it's yeah. a super team. But there was a lot of people like a scoop. I believe if I'm not mistaken, he makes it like his business on cross court cast to say how much he hates Russell Westbrook and how much he does, doesn't think he's a good basketball See, I'm player. See, I'm that one guy that I'm a huge Russell Westbrook fan because I like the energy he brings, and I think on a team like the Wizards, you see what Russell Westbrook is capable of doing. All right, so this th I just want to bring up, the, like I know we brought up these stats, but I'm going to bring up this stat. This is Russell Westbrook's last five games, right, for the Lakers. Last night, 5 for 17. The game before that, 5 for 15 from the floor. The game before that, 7 for 15. The game before that, 2 for 14. And the game before that, Two for 12, five game cumulative. He took 73 shots. He made 28% of them. That is not an all-star. That is somebody that Vogel made the right move. Get off the court. You know, this is, I don't care how much money you make, which by the way, $47 million due to him next year out of a part of a $206 million contract for five years. He's a free agent in 23, but at this point he's on the downward turn. He needs to cash in right now because he's, he's not going to get paid. This kind in of money terms again. of athletic ability and skill set, he's not really on the downward turn, but he's never going to be the right piece for a team like the Lakers, specifically uh, uh, the right piece for a guy like LeBron James. LeBron James needs shooters. This guy is not a shooter. He needs the ball in his hands to be successful. And even and then he needs to shoot 30 times to be successful where you see he's shooting 28 percent now it's an interesting timeline for me when we're looking at this whole thing play out a couple days back you got a, a or at least i did a notification saying that frank vogel's job is in fact on the line which i think everybody was expecting that um but when you have a guy like frank vogel who's had success in the nba and he's kind of under pressure to start the guys or to play the guys that are they're paying and they they bring in the big offseason addition in a Russell Westbrook and and you start to see the Lakers aren't really performing with Russ in the lineup specifically in the fourth quarter. So what I think happened was I think Frank probably went to the front office and was like, "Hey, you know, um I understand that my job is on the line, but I feel a little bit of pressure from you guys to be playing this lineup because obviously Russell Westbrook is being paid 45 million dollars this year." Now it was I saw a tweet Right after AJ sent us that text saying that the Lakers front office came out and said that they gave permission to Frank Vogel to bench Russell Westbrook as if a head coach needed permission. Now, not in real time. Not in real time. Not like, hey, they call from yeah, the back phone during the game. They just said, look, I, so that led me to believe that there was clearly some type of meeting about job security and, and the lineup that was being put forth. And Vogel was like, look, if my job is on the line, you got to let me do this my way. And my way is going to include Russell Westbrook on the bench in the fourth quarter. Obviously, at this point in the season, the way the Lakers have been playing, you have no choice but to just try something different. Absolutely. I don't think Russell Westbrook is a really tradable player at this point. Not with that contract. Not with not. that. Well, look, the Lakers could trade Russ. Like, there's a suitor out there. There's a guy. There's So there's a team out there that will willing to take on $47 million of contract next now, year? Of course. Well, this is the NBA. Uh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I there know the NBA team. and the NFL are completely different we're talking about a, uh, If you're talking about a team like Washington, you have to understand – these guys just, just want him? to sell tickets, but Russ, they just trade him. But I'm you have to understand what I'm getting at. Yes, they just they just did trade him. But I'm I'm speaking relatively about a team like a Washington. Who, okay. Even though Washington's actually in the mix in the postseason, but let's say a team that's not or a team that's dying for a star 
Russell Westbrook has a fan base. He is an exciting player to go watch play basketball. Like you see Russ dunk on, on, um, was it Gobert the other night? Mm. It was the highlight of the Mr. entire week Mr. in the Gobert. NBA where he caught a technical. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so Russell Westbrook, there's some, there's some star power there. There's some, um, box office value. If you want to call it that where player, uh, fans want to go see Russ play. Just like I said, you need shooters on the Lakers and you need guys that are going to pre- uh, defend the perimeter and hit threes. And Russell Westbrook, while he does play that, that, Good defense. It's more like a Trayvon Diggs style defense. Don't get mad at me. What it's does like that a, mean? What are you trying to say? You risk bro? it a little, mu- a little bit too much. But so he's going for the he's going yeah. to t- for the telegraph pass, and when he misses it, you know he's wide open and he can shoot the ball. The only thing I can say is this: Vogel, if my job, I'm just put myself in the coach's shoes here. If my job is on the line, and there's rumors swirling, and NBA and and Woj is just chomping at the bit to, to just throw that bomb that Vogel's been fired. I'm going to the front office, and it's not a discussion. It's it's literally me saying, look, if I lose more games, I'm out, right? So I don't want to lose more games. Well, yeah. And if Westbrook is in the lineup, we're more than likely going to lose games because he's not playing well, and I looked at the last five, and that was a small sample size. Clearly, the guy is not all-world anymore. You can't – like, there's headlines going out there like, five-time all-star, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Like, we get it. He well, was no, good. Look, stop. I mean, you can't take away what he's done. He, no, Russell never going to take away his accolades. clearly no a superstar NBA player, but he's just not a championship piece. There's been plenty of guys throughout the course of the NBA history that Dominique Wilkins just comes to mind as a very similar type of player where now, he was an offensive beast, dunked really hard, and, and he brought crazy energy, but he could never win the big game. Now, this is probably not accurate, and I'm not trying to, like, pretend that I know more NBA than I know. But, like, Westbrook, that was a Thunder team. It was him, Durant, and Harden, right? They were all together? Yeah, but James Harden was really not a starter on that team just yet. Just yet, but I'm saying. into his own. Now, KD goes away, wins a title. Harden goes away. He hasn't won a title yet. But he's in line to kind of, if the Nets put it all together. So everybody who's left Westbrook has been more successful is what I'm saying. You added Westbrook as a Lakers. I mean, I wouldn't say that James Harden has been successful. What has he done? No, no. I mean, and not not more successful than Russell Westbrook. And why are they considering him like part of the big three if he's not a success? I mean, he's a good ball player. So, so my point being is the same the same knocks that you have on Westbrook, you could make the same knocks about James Harden. He doesn't play defense in the playoffs. He looks very disinterested when he's out there at times. They have no titles. If the ultimate measuring stick here is how many titles have you won, then the only one that's had success outside of OKC has been KD. Correct. And that's plain and simple to me. All I know is I, I am pro coach on this one of the benching of a, of a, a diva all star. And I say diva all star because look, you know, they're, they're all like this. I mean, it's not like now I, I flip it on its ear. What if LeBron put up those numbers? Right. And it was just total shit for the last two weeks. Would, would Vogel be inclined to say, look, this guy's like 40 years old. We got it. We got to do something else here. Um, like, would you be inclined to bench LeBron James? No, I think that's sacrilege at this point. LeBron James was so just because of name LeBron value. LeBron James, like just, not, not, not name value, just propensity to prove it and or history of proving it in the postseason and history that LeBron James isn't the guy that Russell Westbrook is. You're not going to bench LeBron James unless there's an injury going on. It's just not going to happen. People are going to the, the games to see LeBron more, way more than they're going to see anybody. So you're not going to take LeBron James out of the game. And LeBron James isn't the reason he might be the reason part of it, but they're, they're a better team with LeBron. I don't know that you can make that case with a Westbrook still, even, even when we're talking about shooting percentages, because Russ does a lot of things well without the ball in his hands, but he's just not doing it well this year with the Lakers. And I shouldn't even say that he really doesn't do much well without the ball in his hands. He's, he needs to get. He needs to have the ball for him to be successful, and so does LeBron. So it's just not a good mix. Both of them. But on they the thought court, it was to get him. Well, I don't know. I think Frank Vogel is on the same page as most fans were, and most NBA experts were going into this whole thing. Was that it just wasn't going to work? Scoop talking about it. He's our NBA guy, right? He's in agreement. Where I, I remember Rube saying it's just not going to work. A lot of guys that I that I. Trust what they say about the NBA. We're on the whole Russell Westbrook to the Lakers thing. It's it's nice at surface level, but it's not going to actually pan out. And, and I was the one not. that was like bitching and moaning about a super team. And and in reality, look at the Lakers now. Like they're they're reeling right now, and they're just barely hanging on by a string. But due to the fact that they do have a King LeBron James, you know they're still relative uh, relative, and they're still kind of in it.